Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Over the past few decades, unmanned and remote-controlled drones have become the workhorses of the United States military. Still, many engineers feel that the potential of these aircraft goes far beyond attack and defense. A good example of drone innovation is the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray. Part of the U.S. Navy's unmanned carrier aviation program, the MQ-25 is designed to operate from aircraft carriers and provide aerial refueling support to the carrier air wing. This could drastically extend the range and operational capability of manned aircraft, such as the F-A-18 Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, and F-35C Lightning II. Though many drones are still remotely controlled, the MQ-25 is designed to autonomously take off, provide refueling, and land without human intervention. The MQ-25 is essentially a flying fuel tank with wings. It is roughly 51 feet long and boasts a wingspan of 75 feet. Yet, it is just 9.8 feet high giving it a low profile that makes it hard to detect with radar. The Stingray is powered by a single Rolls-Royce AE307N turbofan, capable of producing around 10,000 pounds of thrust. Of course, speed is not the primary goal with the Stingray. Instead, the Boeing engineers focused on ensuring it could carry as much fuel as possible, up to 500 nautical miles. The MQ-25 also utilizes a sophisticated flight control system that enables it to operate autonomously. This system is programmed with algorithms that allow the drone to make real-time decisions, adjust flight paths, and react to changing conditions during flight. Its advanced avionics and precision landing technology allow for smooth landings and takeoffs virtually every time. Perhaps the most direct precursor to the MQ-25 is the Northrop Grumman X-47B. First introduced in 2011, the X-47B prototype had its first carrier flight test aboard the USS Harry S. Truman. The project was shrouded in secrecy at the time. So, the X-47B had to be carefully moved aboard the ship while wrapped to avoid prying enemy eyes. Like the MQ-25, the aircraft was designed for unmanned, semi-autonomous flight. It was also explicitly intended to operate from aircraft carriers in order to perform precision strike missions and support other manned aircraft. Also, like the MQ-25, the X-47B boasts a stealthy, flat design. This makes the X-47B less detectable to enemy radar systems.
The X-47's flight from the George H.W. Bush represented the first time an unmanned aircraft had ever been launched or recovered from an aircraft carrier. In this case, it was controlled by a specially trained pilot standing on the flight deck. And while the program has yet to progress beyond these demonstrations, the X-47 remains an integral step in the quest to arm the Navy with more advanced autonomous options. Roughly a decade before Northrop Grumman introduced the X-47B, the company's engineers experimented with an unmanned autonomous helicopter design. This was known as the MQ-8 Fire Scout. At just 23 feet long and 10 feet high, the Fire Scout is not exactly an imposing aircraft. However, its small size makes it ideal for reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and situational awareness missions. It is also perfectly sized to be stored aboard not only aircraft carriers, but scores of smaller vessels that could benefit from autonomous air support while at sea. The MQ-8 is also highly versatile, carrying a range of payloads, including electro-optical and infrared sensors, laser rangefinders, and laser designators. It can also be fitted with rock pots for attack and defense. The first round of MQ-8s was delivered to the U.S. Navy's littoral combat ships. These ships were specifically designed to patrol shallow areas closer to shore. and they have a small flight deck and hangar at the rear for storing several helicopters. Thanks to the MQ-8's small size, it can be sent up for initial reconnaissance or to aid in daily patrols, providing eyes in the sky without a massive fuel expenditure or a risk to human pilots. In 2019, Northrop Grumman introduced the latest version of the Fire Scout, the MQ-8C. This updated variant is much larger and boasts twice the combat range of its predecessor. It also looks more like a traditional helicopter, which allows it to act as a decoy in certain situations. The C model is also capable of autonomous takeoffs and landings on both naval ships and land. However, it is modified for advanced precision targeting and aerial fire support, which allows it to better defend its home vessel and any deployed troops or aircraft. The sky is not the only place the United States Navy hopes to incorporate unmanned technology. In the early 2020s, 
the organization launched a project known as Ghost Fleet Overload. The goal is to investigate the possibility of using unmanned surface and underwater vessels for various purposes. One of the first ships to be introduced was the USV Ranger, followed swiftly by the USV Nomad and USV Mariner. These ships can operate completely uncrewed or with a small detachment of six human sailors. Nonetheless, they are still a fully functional part of the fleet. Indeed, the USV Mariner is equipped with next-generation command and control systems and a virtualized Aegis combat system. However, it's unclear whether all USVs will be used for direct combat. Among other things, the Navy has had them handling replenishment operations, patrols, and simple escort missions. In 2022, the USV Ranger participated in RIMPAC alongside two other unmanned vessels, Nomad and Sea Hunter. Another crewless vessel currently being evaluated by the United States Navy is the Mantis T-12 surface variant. Introduced in 2018, the newest Mantis variant is around 12 feet long and 3 feet wide. While small, it has proved extremely useful for operations ranging from maritime patrol, search and rescue, and surveillance to mine warfare and naval fleet security. The vessels can also be controlled from a nearby vessel or via satellite remote, allowing for a wide range of mission approaches. In addition to its communications array, the Mantis T-12 can be fitted with a SeaFleer 230 electro-optic system, sonar scanning devices, and, if necessary, even a deployable nano-unmanned aerial system. The hope is that by using marine drones, the U.S. Navy can drastically cut down on unnecessary risks to human crew members in the near future. Of course, few things are as dangerous as mines when it comes to seaborne hazards. These explosive devices are often deployed by the thousands in order to destroy or damage enemy ships. Still, many of them end up remaining unexploded and hidden inside oceans, lakes, and rivers. However, navies around the world are increasingly using unmanned sea drones and unmanned underwater vehicles to employ sophisticated mine countermeasures without putting crew members at risk. Many of these drones are designed to detect, locate, and neutralize sea mines remotely drastically minimizing human involvement. Indeed, since the end of World War II, sea mines have been a major threat to both military and civilian ships. The development of fully autonomous UUVs equipped with advanced computing technology is seen as a critical solution to this challenge and vehicles like these are expected to play a pivotal role in future sea mine countermeasures. Yet another sector where unmanned vessels are proving useful is ocean research. A great example of this is the Sea Kit. Designed by Sea Kit International, these vessels are highly versatile vehicles with a range of more than 12,000 nautical miles. 
The latest model has been described as the world's first long-range, long-endurance, ocean-capable, uncrewed surface vessel, and it can stay at sea for up to 200 days without human intervention. True to their name, the Sea Kit series can be tailored specifically to the operator's needs. They also have the ability to deploy and recover other unmanned vessels, either to take samples, perform additional research tasks, or engage in deep ocean surveys. And though the ocean will never be fully automated, these new military, commercial, and science vessels have the potential to change how we interact with the ocean forever. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.